Ho, 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 gentlemen. The holidays have come early this year as Manscaped have the gift that keeps on trimming. Santa's beard isn't so appealing when it's coming out of your trousers. And that's why Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming, have you covered this holiday season. Now available in your country, join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped to keep their trees trimmed and ornaments polished. Go to manscaped.com and use code DTR for 20% off plus free shipping. Stafford, under pressure, and a tuck it up. Cooper Cup just went up and took it away. Van Jefferson for the touchdown. Aaron Donald smothers him. Jalen Ramsey puts a pop on Sacked by Leonard Floyd having a day again. Darius Williams with a diving hit. Jordan Fuller comes up with his second interception of the night. All right, guys, welcome back to Downtown Rams. As always, I'm your host, Alexis Kraft. Join here with my co-host, Jake Ellenbogen. And we are coming to you with our last regular season podcast of the year. The last preview episode, I should say, because the Rams are going to take on the San Francisco 49ers this Sunday in Los Angeles. Last game of the season, in division game as always and the last time we played the 49ers the season did not go so well we lost that game uh but jake i'm feeling a little already pre-nostalgic about the fact that we are doing our last regular season episode of this season it just seems like it flew by uh i am once again uh in my recording space uh very dark with a candle lit uh, to do it one last time Ominous during the regular vibes season. Much. <laughs> Ominous vibes. Uh, you know, like I mentioned, the game against the 49ers did not go so well uh, the first time we met up this season. So this time, I'm hoping for a completely different outcome. And I think that we will get it and we'll get more into that. Uh, but Jake, I'm going to let you start this off going against the San Francisco 49ers with this Rams team. What is the number one thing that you think the Rams need to capitalize on against the 49ers? Well, you know, looking at this team, obviously, I think, you know, they're a pretty solid team all around. Um, You know, I think the big thing has always been about the injuries and staying healthy. Uh, You know, keep in mind, took a while for them to get, you know, George Kittle back. Of course, he came back right before the Rams game. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo has had his injury concerns. Even Trey Lance has had his injury concerns, the backup rookie. So uh, regardless of who starts, you're going to want to get off to a good start against this team. This team is not a bad team by any stretch, and they're playing as desperate as any team that the Rams have played over the last few weeks. You know, we kept talking about desperation as, you know, kind of a pivot uh, towards why a team could come out, you know, stronger than normal. Uh, desperate teams are scary. I mean, look at the Ravens last week, despite the fact that it seems like everybody's out for the Ravens. Their whole secondary is banged up. Lamar Jackson didn't play. Their whole running back room's gone. And yet they still somehow figured out a way uh, to make that a one point game. And, you know, they had a chance down the stretch. And so, you know, then you look at the Vikings game. The Vikings game was tough. They're also a desperate team. So, you know, you look at the Niners. And we will probably <clears throat> actually, I, I believe we won't know whether or not the Niners make the playoffs or not, because before this game, uh, I think initially it was going to be Saints Falcons. I think they moved that to the 425 slot to kind of increase the anticipation for fans. Uh, so both games are going to be finishing around the same time. If the Niners do lose to the Rams, they can still make the playoffs regardless of what the Eagles do on Saturday. Um, the Saints just have to lose to the Falcons, but the Niners are essentially winning your in and lose. And you kind of have to, you know, have another team help you out. And so for that reason, you know, the Niners are going to be a desperate team in this sense. They don't force a lot of uh, turnovers. They're 29th in interceptions this season uh, forced. And for, you know, Matthew Stafford being, you know, the quarterback that he's been throughout the year, you know, taking risks and ultimately over the course of, you know, the later portion of the season, really having those bite him. um, This is definitely a team where you can take advantage of in that regard. So, um, you know, I think you just really want to stick to your game plan, have a balanced attack and uh, make sure that you are able to, you know, keep possession of the ball because time possession is key. This team is 14th in time possession to the Rams, 26th in the league rank. Um, The Rams have obviously improved mightily over the last few weeks, um, getting their average time of possession at 28, 54. 
but you know, the Niners average over uh, 30 minutes per game with the ball. You have to make sure that you minimize that. And uh, you, you want to control this game. And I think that's, that's about as simple as I can make it. You want to control this game. You want to control the tempo and that's what the Rams need to do to win this one. Yeah. And you bring up a good point um, about the turnovers, uh, you know, and how Matthew Stafford's been playing because I, I have two different uh, injury COVID reports pulled up right now. Cause I wanted to, to confirm and the 49ers secondary, unless this is not updated on several sites. Um, so I might have you confirm uh, this as well, but it appears at least as of today, uh, their secondary is very beat up with injury and COVID. Are you seeing that as well? Yes. So they had a bunch of, you know, late um, COVID ads this week. Um, they're not going to have uh, Dio Lenore, um, who is out, it looks like, the cornerback. Um, so, that you know, this team is definitely, they have a lot of guys on, you know, that are questionable. Um, you know, Eli Mitchell, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, Jaquaski Tart, and Marcel Harris. Um, this team is still somewhat healthy, though. I understand they're dealing with a lot, but uh, nowhere near as much as, you know, what the Rams have dealt with, you know, over the last, uh, you know, five games, so to speak. But, um, you know, it's really a concern whether or not, you know, Garoppolo or the rookie quarterback, Trey Lance, who, you know, I really like, um, you know, whether or not either one of those guys is going to go. I think it'll be Lance, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah, I think it's going to be Lance, too. And in terms of the uh, COVID list, that can obviously change. I'm not seeing when these guys were put on the COVID list, but I'm seeing like six guys, six plus guys, uh, mainly in their secondary, some of their linebackers uh, as well on that list. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, but, you know, you, we moving kind of towards their quarterback and their offense, you talk about, you know, Elijah Mitchell um, was very good earlier in the season. Uh, he is now dealing with injury. Uh, you know, obviously rookie running back Trey Sermon um, out for the year. Jeff Wilson and uh, Jamichael Hasty have not been that bad. Um, I actually picked up, I think, Jeff Wilson in one of my leagues for a week, and he did uh, a relatively solid job for me. Uh, but for me, their, their receiving game is far more deadly. And I'm not, and I'm using deadly very lightly because, again, I don't believe that the 49ers have one of the better passing attacks in the NFC or the AFC. But you know, obviously got to watch out for Debo Samuel. Uh, someone who is uh, second only to Cooper Cup in terms of stats in the league right now. He's having a very, very good year. Uh, he's a guy that Rams fans I know a lot have beef with because him and Aaron Donald have a little beef going, which I think is very one-sided, by the way. I don't think Aaron Donald gives a crap about Debo Samuel. No, but, he doesn't. But Debo definitely cares about uh, Aaron Donald, whatever. Uh, so I think he's someone to definitely look out for. That's someone that I expect Jalen Ramsey, hopefully, uh, I should say, will be on him most of the game. Um, Ayuk uh, has been playing very well. Uh, they obviously have George Kittle, um, another guy to look out for. So, you know, they have some guys in that receiving game that it's going to be very interesting to see how the Rams line up against and attack. And you know, last week uh, against the Ravens, one of the, the big issues that, uh, you know, I had and I, I saw that a lot of other Rams fans had was that it seemed like the receivers were being left open a lot. And I understand that that can kind of go into our defensive scheme. Ben, don't break. But you'd see guy, you know, receivers catch the ball and have the chance to, you know, run it for a few yards before they were getting tackled. And just looking at guys like Debo Samuel, Ayuk and Kittle, I would hope that that is cleaned up this week because I, as you know, you're a big as big a fan of George Kittle as anyone I know you don't we don't want him to uh, light it up against us we definitely don't want to give him a lot of opportunities because he's one of the best tight ends in the league so it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how the Rams uh, line up I hope that they make some adjust adjustments uh, as, as we did against the Ravens so uh, we'll see and then if you look at their offensive line Jake uh, they obviously have Trent Williams who I'm seeing is listed as questionable but there's no reason that I'm seeing that are you so, seeing on your list yeah so he has an elbow injury and okay. um from what i've heard is that he is going to be available to play they're just you know monitoring him very closely not you know overdoing it he did not practice on wednesday or thursday um we're recording this before they've practiced on friday so he could you know also be a dnp on friday but 
you know, the vibe I'm getting is that Kyle Shanahan is just taking it easy uh, with him. And, um, you know, he's likely going to suit up in a game that, you know, could decide whether or not they make the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's something to look out for. You know, other guys on their offensive line, um, you know, not that bad. Uh, you know, Lakin Tomlinson, Alex Max, Daniel Brunskill, uh, Tom Compton, you know, is is in for uh, Mike McGlinchey. Yeah, he's not uh, very good. <laughs> yeah, and he's not very good. Um, so uh, other than him, pretty solid offensive line, in my opinion. No, I mean, it's a good offensive line. Um, I think the the issue could be, you know, being without Trent Williams, if he has a setback, you know, say they're testing it pregame, he has a setback, that would be a huge issue for them. And uh, Aziz al a uh, very underrated linebacker. He's been out with a knee. So we'll see if he plays, but he has not practiced yet. And, uh, you know, I don't have any word on whether or not he would go. But, you know, just like looking at this, the fact that the Rams could potentially actually not potentially they've already announced the fact that the Rams are going to have cam Akers back after, you know, six months coming off a torn Achilles and <laughs> they have a pretty healthy injury report, knock on wood. Uh, whereas, you know, the 49ers are now dealing with COVID uh, they you know, bookend left tackle is not practiced yet. Uh, things don't look the best for the Niners in this game, especially without Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, who has not, he has not lost to the Rams. Um, he has beaten the Rams every time he is suited up for the 49ers. He has beaten the Rams. So, um, you know, it seems like he's always hurt. And, you know, right before the Rams game, he always is somehow able to, to push through the pain. This will be interesting, though. I think this is really pushing it. Torn UCL, it really screws up the webbing of your hand. And so, you know, with that, it's almost like when you try to stretch it, it feels like it's like coming apart. Um, it's a serious injury and, you know, it's really hard to grip a football that way. And, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, it doesn't really make sense to play him. Um, you know, when Trey Lance is coming off a really good game last week against the Texans. Um, and plus, you know, it's late in the year, you know, Lance has had all sorts of practices and, um, you know, been able to learn the scheme and, you know, be integrated in that offense. It just seems like rushing Garoppolo back. Um, and, you know, if you do make the playoffs, because there's a good chance, keep in mind, the Saints still have to lose, you know, for the Niners to like they have to they have to lose for the Niners to make the playoffs if they lose. But the Niners can make it if they win. So there's two outs for the the Niners, the Saints, they win and they have to have the Niners lose. So, you know, the Niners definitely have the better outcome. They have the better odds. But um you know, you just don't want to you don't want to rush anything like that because, you know, they really do like Garoppolo from the way it looks. And I mean, he's played pretty well this year. He's had his moments. Um, you know, I don't think it would be smart to rush him back, have him, you know, get a prolonged injury on the hand. And then you're stuck, you know, hey, Trey Lance, I know this is only your third start, but, uh, you know, this is the playoff time and we need you. You know, that that seems like an incredible amount of pressure to put on a rookie. Yeah, I mean, it's tough because, you know, in my opinion, Jimmy is not what he used to be. <laughs> I mean, I, I do agree. You know, I think some people are like, oh, well, Jimmy Garoppolo was never a good quarterback in this league. I don't agree with that. I think there was actually a period of time where he was definitely an above average quarterback in this league. He obviously led the San Francisco 49ers to a Super Bowl. Let's not forget. He had another good year where he had a torn. Uh, he ended up tearing his ACL. Um, but at the same time, you know, you can acknowledge that and also say like it, he hasn't been that impressive lately. I think he's been very hot and cold. As a Rams fan, though, I would probably like to see Trey Lance start. It's not that I don't think that there's potential in Trey Lance. Um, it's just that I don't think he's there yet. And I think that the Rams could do a very good job facing off against Trey Lance. Would you agree or disagree with that? Because... You know, in this game, I would just prefer someone with less experience. Naturally, as a competitor, you could say, oh, well, Trey Lance is going to be a very good quarterback in a few years, whatever your opinion is on that. But as of Sunday, do you think the Rams have an easier time against him or Jimmy Garoppolo? Well, you know, I honestly can't answer that uh, with full confidence because, you know, I mean, there were times where I felt like the Rams kind of let Tyler Huntley play pretty well against them and. Um, you know, Trey Lance kind of offers that same 
you know, structure of, of play, you know, the ability to take off with his legs and make things happen, improvise. And, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo doesn't have that. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, I honestly think Garoppolo is the best way to beat the Rams. Um, you know, him, guys like Derek Carr. I mean, we saw, you know, even going back before this defense, right? Back with Wade Phillips in, I believe it was 2019. Uh, might have been 2018, actually, when the Rams played the Raiders last. Derek Carr, it was the same deal. You know, how to beat this Rams defense, it was the same deal in 2018. Dink and dunk and getting the ball out quick. And, you know, those short passes will kill you. And, you know, Carr kept the Raiders in that game. And the Rams, if you remember, had to have that pick six from uh, Marcus Peters to seal it. Um, Now, you know, we move fast forward to 2021. And we already saw Jimmy Garoppolo do the same thing. They ran the ball, I think, 50 times against the Rams the last time they played them, uh, you know, back on November 15th. Garoppolo had two touchdowns for 182 yards. You know, he didn't really throw a ton. And when he did, it was all easy throws. We're talking about, you know, guys that were wide open, over the middle, not having to make throws, um, you know, uh, you know, basically around the boundary, um, outside the numbers. And I feel like Lance can make those throws, but Lance is more likely to deviate away from their scheme. You know, he's more likely when, you know, the kitchen sink is thrown at him to kind of change what he's doing and not, not go with the agreed upon plan. And so I do feel like in a sense, the Rams would rather see Trey Lance, but he offers a dynamic that Garoppolo doesn't. I think they're both dangerous for the Rams because in reality, um, you know, they can use the Rams leverage against them. You know, you can use that defense against them. And so defense has been playing very well, but keep in mind, Tyler Huntley kept the Ravens in the game close enough where they could have won that game. It'd be a different story right now. So, you know, I can't say for sure who you 100% want to see. I just think, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, Alexis, be careful what you wish for. I keep saying it when people ask me who I want the Rams to play in the playoffs. I'm like, this is another be careful what you wish for moment. I don't want to see the Niners, the Eagles, the Saints. I don't want to pick a team I want to see and then have it be that, you know, they go in there and then they get dominated by that team. You just never know. And, um, you know, we won't know until they take the field. But, you know, Garoppolo has only played really two really solid seasons. Um, 2019, which you brought up in 2021, uh, this year he has 19 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, almost a hundred passer rating, 3,494 yards and a 68% completion percentage. Um, you know, he's had a good year. Um, but you know, with this injury, he might not be that quarterback. However, again, we've also seen the Rams play against an injured Garoppolo before and still, uh, have it not go in their favor. So, We'll see. Um, like I said, though, I'm not exactly about to say that I'd rather play Trey Lance or I'd rather play Garoppolo because I think they both uh, could beat the Rams. I think it's entirely possible both could beat the Rams. Price Picks is the best app you've never heard of. You can choose between stars from all sports, two, three, four, or even five players to increase how much money you win. Join Price Picks today by using our promo code DTRAMS and get a double deposit on your first deposit when signing up with prize picks. Girls, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of finding a bush when I go down on my man's chimney. Dear Santa, all I want this holiday season is for my man to have smooth jingle balls. Thankfully, Manscaped answered with the Performance Package 4.0, so I don't have to find Santa's beard in my man's pants again. Ladies, this holiday season, get your man products that will leave him smelling fresh with their all-new ultra-premium body wash and a two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. It's time to give the man in your life the gift of beautiful skin, hair, and balls this holiday season. Go to manscaped.com and use code DTR for 20% off plus free shipping. Well, that's going to lead us into our kind of game predictions, our stat predictions, um, because I'm basing my predictions off the fact that Trey Lance is going to play because I think that that's uh, what is going to happen. Um, I mean, I don't know that they would 
maybe differ, but I, looking at the inter- interceptions that I believe that the 49ers and specifically Trey Lance are going to throw, that is shifted more towards Trey Lance. So Jake, um, I'll go first, uh, giving my stat predictions for a matchup against the 49ers. I think the Rams are going to have at least two interceptions. I wanted to say three, but I'm not going to get ahead of myself because when I do that, it almost always backfires on predictions. Um, hence what happened with the Ravens game. I definitely over predicted there. Sack wise, like I said, their offensive line actually is not that bad. I actually like their offensive line with the exception of Tom Compton, who again is filling in from Mike McGlinchey, who's a great tackle. So I still think the Rams are going to get a couple of sacks. I'm going to say that the Rams are going to get two sacks, two interceptions. I think that Cooper cup is going to have a two touchdown game. I know that his, uh, personality is not to chase records or chase anything like that. I don't know that he'll break. Um, of course, now the numbers slipping my mind. Is it yardage in a season that he needs like, he needs like 200 yards. He needs 126, I think, or something like that off the top of my head. I'm forgetting. He needs 12 receptions. I think to break the receptions record held by Michael Thomas. I mean, I'm going to say that, I'm not going to bank on either one of those. I won't be surprised if if the Rams feed him a lot and that happens. I mean, it is kind of a lofty ask, um, you know, in j- with just one game to go. But I still think that Cooper Cup's going to have a two touchdown uh, game. Again, we're, I'm going with twos. So second meeting against the 49ers. So we're going two touchdowns for two uh, Cooper Cup two interceptions, at least two sacks. I hope all of these numbers uh, end up being more than more than two, but uh, you know, we'll see. But that's, that's my very modest take on this game because I don't want to jinx myself like I did last week. So Jake, what are your stat predictions? Yeah. So, you know, like kind of going into this game and, and you're looking at it from, you know, multiple angles. I mean, I just want to point out that the Rams, uh, before the Steelers nine sack outburst on Monday night football, the Rams led the league in sacks, the 47, um, that's not even close to a record. The 85 bears have the record. It's in the seventies. If that tells you anything. Um, so this is a team that doesn't, you know, they don't get a ton of sacks, but really no team in the league gets a ton of sacks. They're second in the league and they only have 47 to this point. I'm going to say the Rams stick with their, you know, kind of a little bit of a run here with their three, three plus sack performance. I'm going to say they get three plus sacks on Trey Lance. I also think Trey Lance is going to start. I think it's going to be incredibly difficult for Jimmy Garoppolo to get out there and hold a football, um, let alone throw it. So I'll go with them. By the way, the Rams DVOA ratings, uh, they're sixth in the league in offense, fifth in defense, sixth in special teams. I think it shows you over the course of time, it took a while, but you can see why I believed in, you know, Raheem Morris's defense. And I believe that, you know, at the end of the day, they were going to get things fixed and this is what they've done. And, You know, they've become maybe the best uh, all three phases complimentary football team in the league. Uh, As of right now, going into week 18, I feel like they really are. So, you know, looking at sap predictions for the offense, you know, I think this is going to be the game where Cooper Cup, you know, does break the record um, for both receiving and, uh, you know, receiving yards and receptions. I really do feel that way. Um, You know, I think he's going to get what he needs to do, uh, you know, in this one. And, you know, at the end of the day, I know he's not vying for it, but it's hard to imagine, Alexis, you think of this scenario, Cooper Cup comes in and, you know, he goes for 14 catches for 180 yards, two touchdowns, leads the Rams over the Niners. I understand Matthew Stafford is throwing this football around, but does not does that not make him the MVP if he's doing that? I mean... I look at Rodgers and he's got 13, you know, 13 fewer touchdowns he did last year passing. Doesn't even finish with 4,000 yards since he's probably not going to play this weekend. I don't know if I would give it to Rodgers because, yes, he's the best quarterback, but I just don't feel like we should look at MVP as anything more than the best player of the season instead of focusing so much on the valuable aspect. So. You know, what I will say is if Cooper Cup goes out there and he has like a 14 catch, 182 touchdown game, I don't see how, you know, a guy that we're talking is now on a 13 and four football team as the number two seed helps clinch the division. I don't know how he's not the MVP over Aaron Rodgers, who, again, you know, best season for a quarterback this year. 
but no quarterbacks really had eye opening stats. It's not a, a record breaking season by any stretch. And you know, I love Rogers. So it's not, it's not hate against him. Um, and then you look at Jonathan Taylor, who I love Jonathan Taylor and you and I both liked him, but you know, you look at him and as great as he's been, it's not even close to one of the best seasons all time for a running back. It's not close to breaking records. And on top of that, there is a very possible chance here. The Jaguars playing for literally nothing but to knock their division rival out of the playoffs. There is a real chance that Jonathan Taylor is playing for a team that doesn't even make the playoffs. So by virtue, if you want to even throw Tom Brady and Stafford in there, you know, I'd make the argument Stafford had the, the six, you know, turnovers the last, you know, two out of the last three weeks of the game, uh, the season and Tom Brady lost it. You know, uh, he lost to Stafford one V one. He lost to Taylor Heineke. He lost to Trevor Simeon and, you know, was shut out and also lost to, uh, you know, Taysom Hill, you know, to me and almost lost to the jets last week. To me, I don't think this is as close as people are making it. And I feel like if Cup were to have a game like I'm talking about, he would have to be the MVP, even for people that wouldn't believe it going in. It's definitely a compelling argument. You know, I I would be more than happy to see Cooper Cup win the MVP. I'm not someone who typically gets invested in this award. Um, and, you know, I, I've explained to you outside of the podcast, my view of the MVP, whether it's the NFL, NBA, whatever, has always been who, if removed from their team, would their team be significantly dif- different? Would the landscape of their team look significantly different? Like, who is the most valuable player? So, like, when Steph Curry used one MVP um, all those years back, you know, that was kind of how I viewed it, uh, just using him as an example. Um, so I think, you know, if you remove someone from their team, I mean, who adds the most value to their team more than anybody else in the NFL? And... I have kind of been saying for most of the season now, or at least the second half of the season, that I think Jonathan Taylor would be my pick. Um, It's hard to deny what Cooper Cup's done, though. I mean, again, and maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I would be more than happy to see Cooper Cup win the MVP. I'm not super sold. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I'm over. I don't think that that's necessary. Um, Tom Brady, I think, is kind of out of the question now. Um, I mean, it is impressive what he's doing. I don't know if, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like Stafford though. You know, they both have thrown a lot of picks and they both are, you know, yeah, it's, it's like, it, it, yeah, but we'll see. Um, I, again, I'm not super invested in the end of the year awards. Um, as some people are, I did like to <laughs> argue with people about defensive player of the year though, when Aaron Donald won and TJ Watt did it, I won't get into that. Um, that was I, the only I think you'd have an argument this year too. Um, you know, I understand, you know, TJ well, Watt could potentially break the record in 14, 15 games, whatever, but, but see, Donald is also still having an incredible season pressures wise and what he's generating for other guys. And also what I would also add to it. And this is coming from somebody that will probably, if I put my vote in, you know, I'd probably say it's TJ Watt anyway to give him respect, but I mean, Donald is just as deserving and, you know, it's not a hate. It's not knock on TJ Watt. It's not hating on the Steelers, but, you know, Donald didn't win the year he deserved to win because the argument was Khalil Mack was playing for a 12 and four Raiders team that made the playoffs. Whereas, you know, Aaron Donald was playing for a team that missed the playoffs. If TJ Watt, you know, as great as he is, doesn't lead his team to the playoffs, then you could argue Aaron Donald, you know, was the defensive player of the year. He already is in that conversation. He's very much, you know, neck and neck, I think, with Watt as far as what he's done that isn't talked about. His double team rate is even more insane this year. And the fact that they added guys, you know, like Von Miller, the fact that Greg Gaines is, you know, basically taking the next step and you have, you know, Leonard Floyd playing the way he does, they take the sacks away from Donald. That's the thing people don't get is that, you know, it, it's it kind of goes both ways. TJ Watt gets more sacks because he is an edge defender. He rushes from the edge. He doesn't have to go through the trenches of the interior. And furthermore, he's playing with guys like Cam Hayward for sure. But two, it was out pretty much the whole year. And the other guy's a rookie. Oh, not, the, not a rookie, but a first year starter who we really like in Alex Highsmith. But 
It's not like having, you know, Von Miller, uh, Leonard Floyd playing in the trenches, having Greg Gaines now taking your sacks. I mean, Donald doesn't care. At the end of the day, that's why Donald hasn't gotten the the sack award probably because he just simply doesn't care about you know being the guy to get the sack. He's just trying to force pressure and make it so everybody around him eats. And to me, that's why Donald you know is most deserving. I think any any year really. I mean, he's the best player in football, and I think anybody would admit that. But, you know, Bill Belichick, I believe, is the best coach in football. And I can't remember the last time he won coach of the year. And I think this year would be his best year. And he's probably not going to win it this year. So I call it Belichick, you know, when when you're obviously the best in your profession and you don't win an award because it would just be unfair at that point. Um, but that's just me. I, I do think anybody arguing for Aaron Donald, that is not a biased argument. I think it's 100% a real thing. Now, if you're arguing for miles Garrett, whose team has already been eliminated, that would be ridiculous. But you know, TJ Watt, Aaron Donald, whatever. I don't have an issue with that. Uh, I don't know about you, but, but that's kind of where I stand on that. Yeah. Well, in, 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 you know, that my pick for defensive player of the year isn't either one. Um, you know, I Uh, well Parsons would also be in that conversation. If you're going to say him, I mean, that's who as long my as you don't pick say is. Trayvon Diggs. <laughs> no, 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 not Trayvon Diggs. Uh, you know, I have to give credit where credit's due, but I, I don't think that he's. I think the hype there is a, is a little misconstrued. But no, I, I would choose Micah Parsons, and that is big coming from me because I do not like the Cowboys. Oh god, um, so annoying. But, but yeah, Micah Parsons, Parsons is like a freak. He's unreal. He's so good, and um, that's who I, I. I mean, I know I'm very confident he's going to get a uh, defensive rookie of the year. Um, but I, I truly believe he should get defensive player of the year, but we'll see, you know, at the end of the day, I don't care about any of these awards. I care about a super bowl. And oh, yeah, I, I agree so with you. It's kind of like, it's fun to, you know, you and I like to banner about this, but I know that you're in the same boat as me. It's kind of like these yeah. awards truly don't matter. Um, what matters is winning. So, well, that uh, kind of ruins it too, because like normally we're we're kind of in the same boat in regards to awards. So it's like we can't really banter back and forth or argue because we're normally on the same side. Just like same thing, like we we tend to like the same prospects. I mean, you may have a little bit of a higher grade on a guy than I have a lower grade on or something, you know, vice versa. But we tend to like the same players if you haven't like noticed that. Um, one guy you and I like and maybe didn't like a ton uh, you know, during the draft uh, afterwards, I, I liked him a lot more. Um, Cam Akers, and he's going to play. And I'm I'm really curious before we get into the actual, you know, score prediction, where you feel Cam Akers role will be in this game, because I'm kind of looking at 10 carries. I keep getting asked what he's going to get. I don't know, but I, I see 10 carries. It only took him nine carries against the 49ers last year to get over 80 yards. Uh, he really, I mean, the excitement is there because when you look the first two games, uh, first two playoff games, he was leading the league in rushing. So let's not forget. He had one of the best stretches, you know, the last five games, including the playoffs of last year, uh, he was top five in rushing, but where are you on him? Do you think he's going to get a full workload or do you, are you kind of along the lines of, yeah, he's going to get like 10 carries. I agree. I I think the Rams rightfully are going to be very conservative with him and save him for the playoffs because there's really no need to uh, overuse him this game, um, especially if Henderson and Michelle are fully healthy. I think that it's this is going to be a game for him to kind of just like dip his toes in the water again and just kind of like slowly reacclimate himself uh, to NFL play uh, before the playoffs. But I think that they are going to be, uh, you know, again, very conservative with him. There's no need to rush anything. There's no need to, you know, risk injury or anything like that before the playoffs. So that's kind of where I stand on that. I do want to get into the score prediction in the game. Uh, As we mentioned earlier, what matters is winning. And Jake, I think the Rams are going to win this game. Uh, I think that, again, I think the game earlier in this season of the 49ers, the Rams were on a bad streak and they were still working a lot out. And I think Matthew Stafford didn't step up in the way that we needed him to. And I think that that's going to change this week. Uh, we are coming off a win in Baltimore. I understand that game was was very uh, chaotic, but we still got the win. I think the Rams are going to take that energy into the game at home 
uh, against the 49ers. And before the season, I predicted that the Rams were going to win 34 to 14 against the 49ers. I am changing that to 24 to 14. Um, again, I'm not quite sure this is going to completely be a blowout. And like I said, I, I, I kind of like the 49ers offense, some of their weapons that they have. And, you know, the Rams, unfortunately, have a tendency to kind of let guys get loose sometimes. And I think that could be very costly against the 49ers. So I don't know, 24 to 14 feels right to me. Jake, what are you predicting for your score for this game? Yeah, you know, this is a game I think is going to be close. Um, This is the 49ers season. I do think the Saints beat the Falcons. Um, I actually don't think it's going to be very close. I I have a feeling the Falcons are going to, you know, probably come off to a good start. I think the Saints are going to blow them away. Um, And so that will, you know, obviously it'll be happening at the same time. But the Niners, in my opinion, have to win this game to make the playoffs. And so I guess I'm saying the Niners aren't making the playoffs because, I have the Rams uh, winning this game. I have this game being a little, a little closer, uh, 31-28. Um, you know, I think the Rams are going to score what the Niners did last time, scoring 31 points. But I think the Niners are really going to keep this thing going. I think they're going to be able to keep, um, you know, scoring touchdowns. This is going to be a battle, and this is what happens. Sometimes, you know, as great as the defense has played, sometimes you get into these games. This is just, I, I feel like this is one of those kind of shootout, you know, really exciting uh, finale type of games where, you know, maybe if if things made more sense, the Rams defense would have made this a 13-10 game or something or 20-10. to um, But I just feel like everything going on right now with San Francisco, knowing that their season's on the line, they're going to come out and they're going to give it their all. And, you know, I really do like the Rams at home here. Um, I understand the last time, you know, things didn't go the way they wanted to. So the Rams are, you know, this is the monkey off their back game. Uh, you know, as we mentioned, uh, Cooper cup did not catch a touchdown th- that game, but he did go for uh, 11 receptions for 122 yards. The Rams totally abandoned the run, uh, after early on, you know, you had the interceptions with Stafford, you went down 14 to seven, you answered with a seven play seven, uh, 75 yard drive that I thought they did way too quickly in the second quarter, putting their defense back on the field. Um, then you had an, a long 11 play drive that went seven minutes. So you went down into the half, uh, down 21, seven, um, you did a nice job stopping them on 10 plays. But they get, you know, they ripped up six minutes in the third quarter. You were down 24 seven. So you were really never able to get back in the game because of time of possession. I think with the Rams, the way they've changed their approach, the way their game plan is more balanced. I understand Stafford is still going to throw in the 30s. You don't want to see him throwing over the 40s. Typically, he threw 41 in the last time you get him in the 35 range and you run the ball 30 times. I think you're going to be able to be pretty good in that sense. Uh, The Niners time of possession, though, it it just can't happen. Last time they had it almost 40 minutes of the game. I mean, that's ridiculous. You you can't allow that. Um, That's not conducive to winning football. And so, you know, the Rams are just going to have to make sure that they do a good job of not turning the ball over and holding on to the football and, you know, sustaining longer drives because the one touchdown they had against the Niners, that drive uh, was two minutes and 33 seconds. Um, so, you know, that's just not going to cut it. And uh, you're going to have to sustain the longer drives. You had 27 carries out of Eli Mitchell for 91 yards. So I thought the Rams defense, despite not looking that great against the run, they actually did a pretty decent job against the run. The Niners ran 44 times to the Rams 10 the Rams will run more than that in this one. I think the Rams get the job done. Uh, 31 28 at SoFi, improving to 13 and 4, knocking out the Niners, returning the favor after the Niners knocked out the Rams in 2019. And the Rams not only win the division, but they clinch the second seed and uh, they get ready to play what would be the New Orleans Saints in a, another <laughs> another postseason rematch. Hopefully that would uh, not end well. sour. <laughs> Yeah, that would certainly be an interesting scenario. Uh, Obviously, some bad blood between the Rams and the Saints. But that's going to do it for us, guys. Our last preview episode of the regular season of 
uh, well, it's 2022 now, I guess. But we will be back uh, after the game with the recap episode. Uh, But until then, guys, as always, if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe. You can follow us on all social medias at Downtown Rams. You can follow me at The Alexis Craft on Twitter. You can follow Jake at J.K. Bogan. And like I said, we'll be back. But until then, stay safe, take care, and go Rams. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DTR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and make sure to use code DTR. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Price Picks is the best app you've never heard of. You can choose between stars from all sports, two, three, four, or even five players to increase how much money you win. Join prize picks today by using our promo code DT Rams and get a double deposit on your first deposit when signing up with prize picks.